Okay, microphone is working. This one is working again. Mm -hmm. Somebody wanted to say something? I was just on that um, the last slide um, around when you have people that have been in the organisation for different lengths of time. Yes. That can be a challenge too if someone's been there for a long time. It's yes. Fairly negative or burnt out, say. Right. Around their reality of yeah. you know, managing that tension of young yeah. And, yeah. and newer or and more enthusiastic. Right. And uh, I'm not interested in just uh, building up a huge pile of challenges we did not see up to now, but really communication really is that complicated. And the next question, how can we reduce it again on a manageable and thinkable amount? So that's the other side of it. Because each reality is, well, as you mentioned, it's their own reality, it's their own truth, isn't it? Right. Yeah. And so the art is with this multitude of possible realities to find for the situation we are in a shared reality with focuses we could do in the amount of time we have to do that mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a very complex thing and very often we we need metaphors and a metaphorical understanding to do that. But we need a conscious dialogue with the metaphors to find out whether we adopt the right metaphors. Because metaphors can transport an understanding of reality that is not adequate. So we, not just because it's a metaphor, it's wonderful. It might be, uh, you, you, for example, you know that many companies adopt war metaphors, which mm -hmm. are not wor making things easy or, or easy understandable, but it's um, not the right metaphors. Mm. That's true. Mm. A lot of companies adopt war yes. um, metaphors. Yes. Or yes. sports metaphors. Yes. Or, sort of or machine metaphors. Mm -hmm. I was thinking there is a difference, I guess, between my truth and my reality. Mm. Yes. Mm. My truth is I don't like this chair. But my reality is, it is a chair, it is here. Mm. <laughs> if I try and walk through it, mm. I'm, I'm going to be in pain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's probably quite an important piece to be thinking about here, because truths are more individual perceptions, and realities have some basis in the actual factual existential reality. Yeah, certainly the chair is there. For, uh, it doesn't help us that we know that when you look at it as a microcosmos, it's almost nothing. It's just movement. <laughs> but if I hit my, my foot on it, it's, it's still there. So in the range of reality we have access to, it's, it's, it's real. And still it's something different uh, from different frame of reference because a chair, a chair is not a chair, it's something in a context. Uh, Francisco Varela made with us um, <coughs> the experiment saying, when is the table a table? Mm. Yeah. Sometimes the table is just a table when you put um, um, a plate uh, on a cushion. Do you need feet of a table that is a table? How high must it be that is a table? Is it, all, is it the table when it's a small table? Is it still a table when you put it on the floor? And this makes clear that even these facts of reality we all can share, it's still a question of how we do how do we understand what that is. Mm -hmm. so. But we get very caught up in perceptions. So my dislike of this chair might predominate. Whether I like it? Whether I like it or not. Yeah, it predominate. For example. But that absolutely irrelevant to its function of being a place for somebody to sit on if they wish. Yes, but culturally that's different whether you are in Arabia or exactly. in UK. Yeah. How, <laughs> where, how, when you can sit on it. I could not sit when it's too deep down. I make a difference between truth and being convinced. I think everybody has a right, and it's uh, it's wonderful if you are really convinced of something, and and for yourself, it's it's okay that it's your truth. 
but you have a problem when you think because your it's your absolute plausible reality it's the truth yes, I wanted to ask you, Krishna Ambedkar, about the, the use of metaphors in organizations that I yes. think are very powerful yes. in terms of a shared culture and in terms of very yeah. quickly conveying a message. Right. I was my, my question. My specific question is: if you see any counterindications in using metaphors in organizational settings? No, I do not see a counterindication, but I I think it should be the metaphors should. Uh, be critically looked at like all methods and all languages, whether the metaphors mm -hmm. are helpful at this moment. The reason I'm, I'm asking is because I recently read in, um, in a book, uh, I don't even remember the author right now, um, about an or from a, written from an organizational consultant, uh, in a section where he was uh, describing the possibility of potentially manipulating people in doing training in an organization. I use metaphors a lot, and I love it, actually. I, I think it's very effective. He uh, added to his list the use of metaphors, uh, basing it on the grounds that it uh, can... Uh, uh, easily uh, contaminate Be people. misused. Yes. Yeah, you can misuse everything. No, this that's is, this, with, this with language, that's the same. Mm -hmm. You cannot not use language because it can be misused. Mm -hmm. And working with metaphors is a kind of language. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I cannot agree to that. Mm -hmm. But certainly I agree that we should uh, not misuse and that not situous people. This is why I set up with my clients a meta stance uh, of uh, equal eye level watching what we do together. Mm -hmm. And I usually, we will see when I demonstrate a, a, a learning conversation here, you will see that I always explain to the client what I'm trying to do and, mm -hmm. and what my reality understanding is from which I'm coming mm -hmm. that the person can control with her. She agrees or not? The, the cognitive part should be the right. bridge, as yeah. you were saying before. I'm working totally transparent. Mm -hmm. I think that every organization has its own metaphors, yes. their own history, and, yes. like, and to listen to what they have. For yes. Language. Yes, certainly. It's a powerful tool to understand, mm -hmm. and how how much it is shared, and very often it goes back to the origin of the organization. Mm -hmm. And st like it's, uh, the monkeys and the, yeah. and the banana, it's still there, also nobody knows why it evolved. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah, obviously, yeah. 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 You have uh, 15 minutes more for the theater metaphor, or you need a break right now? Let's do the do the theater. Okay. Those who have been quiet, it's just their fate now. Uh, <laughs> it's that kind of day then. Okay. Uh, after, I guess after the break, then I do. I, I change setting, so we do a dialogue. Somebody of you can come in with a issue, and I prefer to have an issue on organizational work. In the last workshop, we, I tried several times, but each time something different came in between, so I couldn't show how to work on organizational questions. So, the theater metaphor, uh, Byrne used it, many people used it. I, I, was it you who talked about a director, or was it you? I, Me. Uh, you, yeah. So, many people spontaneously refer to the theater of filmmaking metaphor uh, to state that reality is created and there are roles of those who are involved in creating reality, there are levels of how that can be described. And my experience is that in our culture almost everybody immediately picks up when I talk in theater metaphors to talk in these metaphors as well. So it's a very easy way to describe reality, personal reality, and organizational reality without introducing any kind of lang specific language 
and especially not introducing a uh, psychological language. <coughs> Before you go on, but, um, thinking about India, the, the two from India, are theatre metaphors very common? And also thinking about Brazil. A good question. Mm -hmm. okay. so different roles. We see director and mm. various roles. And the player and the, the plot. The plot, you said, uh, the, the idea, how the story should be, and then the writing down all the steps, how the story, the script. So that's coming to you as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think your body is absolutely. Films don't necessarily have stage mm -hmm. in them. Maybe they do. No. In the making of the film. Maybe you can like tell what you mean by the film. Yeah, I think you can understand this a bit more than it might yes. be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 But for example, <laughs> uh, in understanding what is ne uh, necessary to lead a company or a project, as uh, the differentiation between <coughs> the, the script maker, the script writer, and the director uh, is very useful because the script writer is somebody who could, from a basic idea, what's called a blot in theater metaphor, uh, write down how this can be enrolled with the people available, with on the stages available, with the means available. And for good management, you need somebody not maybe in the beginning that doing everything, but on the, in the process, uh, adding to that that everybody it can be described what they're trying to accomplish, and understand how they, uh, which kind of roles and how they interplay with style and all these things. But usually, that's a different talent than somebody if he has a script can gather people and tell them how to play together. And some leaders are good at uh, directing people, and but they don't know how to write a script, so they bring everybody on the stage and together they try to invent a play. What sometimes is good, but many very often is nonsense. Uh, or they have invited everybody and then they, the script evolves and they find out, oh, they only need half of them, so they have to yeah. send them away again or change roles. And so, uh, on the other hand, there are people who have a, a script competence and they write down how they want to have it and they think if everybody reads that script, they know how to play. Understand. They don't need a, really a director. Yeah. But you need both. One is a specialist in designing, and the other is a specialist in uh, uh, leading people. And these are two major parts of strategic competence. Mm -hmm. Many leaders just think, if I have a plot and I have competent employees, I tell them what the plot is, and mm -hmm. they have to find their way uh, to accomplish a play. And this usually doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, many of the CEOs claim this. I will just say, and you have to somehow get it done. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I, I see this, this, yeah. the last uh, bit where you yeah. just have a plot, and you think you get the right people. Yeah. And then they just kind of have to go do. Yeah. And create, and then they don't. <coughs> then there is. They are not capable to do it. They are not capable. Mm. Uh, we need to find different right people. Right. Um, and uh, and there is power involved, of course. Yeah. You know, there is a um, right. a display of, of, of mm. that power at that point. Yeah, and it helps a lot if I have uh, some authority to mm. these people to say, plot is not enough, we need a script, and we need the directing. So if you are a specialist on plots, fine, but don't think that's leadership. Mm -hmm. So let's see from where we can get uh, the script and the directing. Or if you are a director, it's no problem to admit that you do not have an idea of what script, and maybe you know, don't have an idea for a blot. So then invite other talents, and together you can uh, go for a good play. Mm. And I think sometimes it's also the opposite, where it's so heavily scripted, we cannot move beyond that. Mm. So we have a plot, there is a script, oh, yeah. and people have to fit the roles. So right. I think sometimes individual realities are discounted. Yes. What they bring right. can be discounted and not really used very well. Yeah, or the script is not, it does not match the talents of the role. Yes. Players. And in which case, 
the script is held up as For sacrosanct. And or otherwise, other. you hold to the role players mm. and you and you try to to play a to play a <laughs> script, but it's not the script that would tran transport your plot. You could say there's a problem with the casting. Mm. Mm. Yeah. With that, so there's a casting director as well as a director. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And you have to dare to to think about the order. And I, I we we have a principle that is called crystallization principle. Do not invite more people on the stage than, uh, than you can actually use as those who can further the play. Say, play, writing more script, mm -hmm. doing more directing, experimenting, experimenting with small pe part of the piece, and only use uh, invite people if the system so far is ready to integrate more. But usually it's just vice versa. They invite everybody who could be involved, yeah. and and with all these people on the stage, they try to to come to an idea what the script could be. And the democratic idea sometimes. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't work. <laughs> Mostly, right. sometimes it works as well. Mm -hmm. In terms of a word like leadership, yes, um, where do you set that in in the, this metaphor? I, very generally, I'm saying leadership is all the competences that have to come together to come up with a successful play. Okay. And it has these different aspects. Okay. And leadership is not usually not in one person. Mm -hmm. Most okay. often it's a, a quality you need to get and find out which persons to have parts of the qualities that have to be put together as a shared reality and a shared leadership competence. We too much sink into competences of individuals. Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> that myth about yeah. the individualist leader yes. has, in this culture of Britain, yes. has definitely increased. Yeah. We have bought the American idea of yeah. a charismatic figure more and yes. more. And at the same time, it's not allowed to admit that you don't have the ingredients you need and so. and you try without them, then you have a problem and the others do. Yeah, but my experience in organization is really that it, it's very hard to admit that you don't have the yeah. the, the qualities or the talents that, that, yeah. that you need and instead of trying to yeah. check that, it's really to misfit the people, right. you know, pushing them right. in certain yeah. roles and positions. And if you, you seek support, you often Seek it in the dimension you know about, mm -hmm. and do not understand you need support from the mm -hmm. complementary mm -hmm. dimensions. Mm -hmm. But this would mean that you have to do work in uh, putting together realities. Yeah. And if you think you do not have time, you hope somehow you, mm -hmm. if you enlarge your perspective, somehow we'd know how to do it. So see, you see immediately. If you talk in terms of theater metaphor, you can easily talk about essential questions in organizations without any psychology. So you can use theater metaphor as a personality description. So then personality is a portfolio of one's roles, one's stages you play on, the themes you are involved in, the kind of stories you share, and the styles of the place you are in. So this is didactic, it's not saying that's how personality is. This is saying if, if people want to talk about how am I as a professional personality, the question might be, oh, tell me about the stages you spent your life on. Do you choose the stages? To, are you attracted to the stages? By what? It can be very effective to get a lot of information very quickly. Yes. yes. It's very quickly yeah. for a lot of information. Yes. Basic information. And sometimes it might be everything is right, but the stage is wrong. Yeah. Many, uh, for example, if you do a, a, a project of development, the top management wants to have it on the stage with cameras on. Also, you do not know what you want to do. The stage is wrong. They should do on, on a backstage and have time to think about what it could be. And when it's developed, then they can put it to the big stage. 
I was thinking that also it can uh, give uh, an idea of the imago, of the, the, the professional imago of the person. Right. This, this would be sub, sub-descriptions of what mm-hmm. one thought about the imago. So the idea is you are your roles you spend your life in because there is no other life. Mm-hmm. You are the stages where you're on. You are the themes you are involved in. You are the kind of stories that are told or played with your involvement <coughs> And you are the styles of play. Especially the style of creating reality is something I very often focus on. Is there is a style always to come across important with much light and cameras and big money, then you can probably on with this style not address to spheres of reality and development that need less light, no cameras, intimate situations, freedom to think about uh, not spending so much money. So it's very easy between people from very different professions to talk about personality using theater metaphors. Mm -hmm. Nothing psychological on that. And it's not intimate because it's referring to the world anybody can see any anyway. Mm-hmm. And still the way it is described gives you an idea whether it's done fine or has to be developed, or there are limitations or not, and then you can di- dialogue on that, on your impressions that come up when you listen to somebody explaining herself as a bundle of roles in which she spends her life. And, into it, that's a, and so this is... A, a methodical, conscious frame setting that is inviting a lot of unconscious, intuitive understanding. So it's a wonderful, methodical combination that helps this dialogue between these spheres. 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 Spheres, yeah. But of course the Greeks understood the Greek theater they actually understood it as part of their tradition. Yes. Right? With the chorus, the clock, and the, yeah, yeah, the, the mask. There were many ways to play around with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So people easily can dialogue on personality, and they include their observations. Uh, I see how you are dressed here. Are you dressed the way in your company? I heard that you act on stages in styles where you should be shiny outside when you dress this way. I understand that there is a problem. So it, it's very short ways to talk to each other mm-hmm. about what is uh, plausible and what is appropriate. And you can use a metaphor to be oriented to the past, to the present or the future. So it's not habitually oriented to past, for example. And individuals and also organizations meet for inventing shared plays, tying together roles, stages, stories. For example, if, if, if two teams have to go together, they can think about, and each team may have stages, roles, ideas about plays, styles. They have a language to talk to each other, how we can invent a shared play. And uh, the mer- we have many, many mergers in companies that just m- produce a lot of damage because they do not have a language to talk about how could a shared play then be. So this is on a schema to describe that. So this is the personality version of the theater metaphor. Personality is the roles, the stories, the stages, the topics, and the styles of play and created processes. This is what you are. And if you want to change your personality, the question is what in what combination do you think you should change? 
And very often people have wrong ideas what to change. Maybe if you are trainers, you all have the experience that people come to you and they want to change uh, stages. They want now to be a psychotherapist, no longer uh, a manager. Because they want to come in contact with more human dimensions of communication. They try, they hope if they change stages, it gets better. And they do not know that they do not know the role that say different kinds of encounters. Uh, so I help them to understand that changes in how they understand their role and the style in which they play their role maybe inserts that dimension of humanity in her life in which they are already competent and not uh, join the amount of unsatisfied psychotherapists. Does it come across that it's really an easy way to talk about yeah, personality yeah, yeah. and it's professionally neutral? It's not psychology. Yeah. Good. And this is the uh, schema or uh, focus on the on the encounter dimension of with the same language. Yeah. How could that be a shared play? Do we share understanding of roles? stages, stories, and so on. So I promise 15 minutes, and this has been 15 minutes. Any questions or comments on the communication models? We had, if you uh, subsume um, theater model also under communication models, we have three. Yeah. Yeah cultural encounter models, a dialogue model, and the theater metaphor model.